Welcome to the virtual college exploration for all North and South Carolina students, sponsored by the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers and Strive Scam. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping notes. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at CACRA.org, C-A-C-R-A-O dot org. The presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, C-A-C-R-A-O dot org. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters. Hey, thank you, Molly. Definitely appreciate you setting this up for us. My name is Scott Paul Hamus, and I am the Associate Director of Bluefield College's Traditional Admissions Office, which means that I work with all of our residential students who are studying on campus, and primarily the students of Northern Virginia, as well as our Northeastern states. Uh, Bluefield College is my alma mater. I'm a 2011 graduate of the Christian Studies Department, and I've been here on the team for about four years. And I'd also like uh, my coworker, Emily, to say hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Emily Coppola. I am the Transfer and International Admissions Counselor for Bluefield. Um, I'm kind of new to the department. I've been here since March. But to the area, I've lived here my whole life, so I'm pretty familiar with everything. Um, and I'm glad to have this opportunity where I can still meet and speak with our students, even though everything is a little bit hectic in the world right now. But I will let Scott take the reins for part of the presentation. Great, thank you, Emily. We'll go ahead and get started. And Emily, if you just wanna jump ahead to slide number two real quick. I want everybody to be able to see our contact info. Now this will be posted. Um, at the end of the presentation as well. And we do have a QR code at the end. So you wanna scan that, ask us some additional questions or just get in contact. We'd love to hear from you. But I definitely want you to know, go ahead, Emily. Uh, some quick facts about the college. You wanna know what you're looking at and who you're talking to. We have about 1200 students on our campus. So we are a relatively small school, but we totally love that we are able to maintain an average class size of about 15 students at the smallest. I can tell you from my personal experience, I had a class with just two other guys and our professor. So three people interacting with someone with a doctorate degree so we could really learn and understand all the material we needed. And then of course, with that, we have a 14 to one student faculty ratio, which means for every 14 students, there's one member of the faculty. So we are able to maintain that smaller environment where students are able to learn from and interact with their professor very easily. We are not a research institution. This is not a place where professors close their doors and write papers in order to make the college famous. This is a place where faculty leave their door open so that they can continue to interact with other students, not just to learn materials, but even just to pray with their students so that they can become everything that they're meant to be. Um, as a Christ-centered campus, this is a place where we're accepting of all students. And as long as you meet our criteria, we'd love to have you, uh, academic criteria. With that, we represent about 32 different states within our student body in about 16 countries. So a wide variety of students that are gonna be here at this place. And let's go ahead to our next slide, please. Thank you, Emily. Something that's very critical and near and dear to the heart of Bluefield College is our mission statement. You're gonna find that every institution that you look at today and throughout your college search, we all have a mission statement. That is the thing that defines what it means to be a member of the community, and it sets the parameters by which we're gonna operate towards a common goal. At Bluefield, we are a Christ-centered learning community developing servant leaders to transform the world. This is 
a three-part statement, actually. Uh, we put a lot of time and care and consideration into writing this. You could really break it up into Bluefield College is Christ-centered. And that means that each and every one of your faculty and staff are Bible-believing followers of Jesus Christ. And that this is a place where we look at the students and we view our work through the eyes of Christ. We're always looking to him as our example of, of what to do in order to best serve students. Obviously, we're a learning community. This is college. This is where you get to decide what you want to learn and when you'd like to learn it. You have the opportunity to study from more than 40 different programs with a wide variety of concentrations, uh, qualitative reasoning skills, quantitative functions, the liberal arts, pre-professional studies and sciences. And as a servant leader developing college, this is a place where we truly believe that uh, the words of Robert Greenleaf do hold true. Uh, our college president loves to quote Mr. Greenleaf. Uh, he retired from AT&T in the 1950s and is widely considered the founder of the servant leadership movement. And he said that in order to be a servant leader, you need to listen and learn and know your neighbor. You need to listen and learn and know about your coworkers and really figure out what their needs are and then take those on as your own responsibility, prioritizing them above your own needs. And we can definitely look to Jesus Christ and know that he is our truest example of what that means. There are a variety of things that make a college meaningful and make a college experience worthwhile for you. And I definitely want you to consider what does it mean to be mission fit? What does it mean that you line up with the mission and the organization? So I always tell folks, come and interact and meet and greet with us on campus and let us show you how we live out our mission. We'll go to the next slide, please. So you definitely want to know where we are in the state. We are in Virginia. I do want to point out that we do not charge any kind of out-of-state fees. So each and every student has the exact same cost matrix that we're looking at to determine your financial aid packaging. So please don't worry about any kind of out-of-state fees. If you're familiar with Greensboro, North Carolina, we're just about two and a half hours from that area, about three hours north of Charlotte and about two hours northwest of Winston-Salem area. Our beautiful campus is on 82 acres. We are in the mountains, so you can see on the left side of this picture, part of our campus is up on the hillside in East River Mountain to the right. This is a small community with about a 10 minute walk from one side to the other. So no matter where you are on campus, it's only about a five minute walk from wherever you're at to your next class. So we do have the space to build and expand, but we do really enjoy maintaining this park-like atmosphere and environment. Emily. So as I said, we would love to have you come visit us on campus. This is a place that wants to have you. You can see here on the right, that is our virtual tour. It's an experience that you are able to have on your iPhone, whatever smartphone you have, you are able to watch it that way or view it via uh, your virtual goggles and VR headsets. We'd love to have you on campus though. We do know that right now with COVID, we are being very strict about policies that allow us to very safely maintain our ability to meet and greet with folks here on campus and still introduce them to what it means to be able to field college student. So we do offer a variety of experiences. Coming up this Friday, not this Friday, coming up this Saturday, we do have our First preview day of the semester, it is a virtual event because we want to be very cognizant and very careful with the way that we are handling ourselves in campus, especially during this season of COVID-19. 
but we are still offering personal visits. We are still offering students the opportunity with their families to come and visit our campus. And I always tell folks, this is, this is my test for you. I wanna give you a challenge and I want you to give that challenge to us. So when you come to our campus, when you interact with us, and this isn't just Bluefield College, this is all schools. I want you to be aware of the mission and vision, the core values, what does it mean to be a member of that community and then test us. Is that just uh, a slide in a presentation? Is it just words on a website? Or are we truly living out our call to be respectful and careful and kind members of a community? Are we really living out our mission to be a Christ-centered learning environment? So I definitely encourage you, please come and visit us. We'd love to have you. What you can see right here is the new renovations to our Rish Hall. It is a residence hall. And throughout each school year, our maintenance folks, our student development folks are going through the buildings looking to see what we can upgrade and what we can make better for the next group of students who will move in that fall. So one of the things that we were able to do this summer was to improve upon the common space in one of our residence halls. You can see that it is a very well equipped, very comfortable space. It does have massage chairs, foosball, computer lab space. It's just a great place to hang out, be with your friends. One of the really cool things about our residence halls that we did not have when I was a student at the school, so I'm totally jealous of anybody who is currently looking at Bluefield, we have smart washers and dryers. What that means is you can put your wash in before class and actually receive a text message that is going to tell you when your laundry is done and it'll also tell you which dryer is available for you to move your clothes to. So I'm totally jealous <laughs> that you all have all of this great technology with Wi-Fi in every room, all of our rooms throughout campus, both in our apartment style living areas as well as our residence halls are already fully furnished. That means that in your apartments, you do have a full size kitchen. You already have a washer and dryer inside of every unit and all of your furniture inside of our residence halls in those dorm rooms, you're already gonna have a microwave and a refrigerator, as well as all of the necessary furniture that you're gonna need. So one of the very key factors in your decision is, does this school have the program that I'm looking for? And I want you to know that we do have over 40 different academic offerings. Uh, that includes majors, minors, concentrations, as well as online programs, dual enrollment programs, and graduate school programs. So we're definitely very excited to have a conversation with you to learn what is it that's driving you, what are you passionate about, and how can we couple that with your purpose so that you're able to go out and do the things that you really truly enjoy and are going to make an impact on your community and on your family. So next slide, Emily. I know there's a lot here. You may not be able to read it all right now. That's totally okay. That's why we have our contact info on that first slide and we can circle back to that. It, please remember there is a QR code at the end of the presentation. So you can go ahead and scan that and that'll allow us to get to know you a little bit better and see how we can take these programs and you and your desire to learn and go out and make something great for yourself. Next slide, Emily. And actually, I think this is the point where I'm gonna hand this over to Emily Coppola so she can tell you a little bit more about what it looks like to be a member of the community. All right, thank you, Scott. Um, as always, you are great at presenting. Um, so yes, I'm going to tell you all a little bit about what it's like to be on campus, what it's like to be um, plugged in on campus. Let me first emphasize that the photo you're seeing on the screen is pre-COVID. Um, this is one of our worship services. So like Scott emphasized, um, we are a Christian school. Um, so you will be experiencing our worship services in one way or another. And by worship, I mean chapel <laughs> is, is what it's called. Um, so we do have a chapel on campus, our Harmon Chapel. There are um, a select number of chapel services that you will have to attend. These are held on Wednesday mornings. Um, 
but I want to express that these are as immersive as you'd like them to be, but more often than not, when you go to one, it's going to impact you in a big way. It's going to really help you feel like not only are you part of the campus, but that one, it's a family, and that two, Christ is literally everywhere on campus. Um, you can feel him literally just if you're in the cafeteria, if you're in chapel, if you're in class. Um, it's a really awesome experience. But some of the ways that you can plug in, we have, as I said, campus ministries. Um, so one thing I really like to, to point out in my presentations is it's not just um, groups, organizations, and things on campus led by faculty and staff. A lot of our events, anything really you see on campus, there is mostly student involvement or very heavily um, focused student involvement. So my student worker, his name is Mason. He is the leader of the, um, the worship band on campus. So as a student, he has that opportunity to really focus in on what he's interested in, which is worship, of course, um, and he does an excellent job of it. So just to go over some of the opportunities you have, as you can see, we've got campus ministries, intramurals if you're interested in sports, but maybe you don't want to be an actual student athlete, uh, Greek organizations, a lot of clubs and organizations that you see, um, and they really vary from uh, topics of interest. And if you're interested in something, but you don't see it, we would love to talk to you. Uh, once you are a student, see if there's any way we can get that plugged in onto the campus. So as I said, or I guess as Scott said, we have a lot of sports opportunities, um, whether you want to play or whether you want to watch. Um, we've got a plethora of male and female sports as well as co-ed sport. Um, we are D1 in NAIA. Mid-South Conference and the Appalachian Athletic Conference. Um, another opportunity we have for athletes is Athletes of Valor. This is a program that um, really gives military veterans that are athletes the opportunity to uh, play and study and really sees that they have um, different things that they have to worry about, their GI Bill, maybe their training, things like that. Um, and it really gives them the opportunity to plug in as an athlete. Um, which I'll get to in a little bit with a really awesome student we have on campus. Something also that we just recently started, it started new this semester, is our Rams eSports team. So as you can see on the screen, we've got a lot of opportunities. So if you're interested in playing, but you'd like to play competitively for the college, then we definitely have that opportunity for you. Um, and I personally just think that's something that's really cool. It shows that we are continually adapting at Bluefield and we know that times are changing um, and we want to adapt with those times and make our students have every opportunity available. So the cost, I know this is always a big question, but I always love to emphasize that don't, don't think that these numbers are set in stone. Yes, they are finalized numbers, but more often than not, our students' tuition and fees um, are going to be drastically changed by the amount of financial aid that they're going to receive. Um, as you can see at the bottom, 99% of our students receive some form of financial aid. Um, tuition and fees, like Scott said earlier, the tuition is not different whether you're coming from down the street in Virginia or if you're coming from uh, across the country. So every student's going to look for, at the same tuition charge. Uh, we do have a lot of scholarship opportunities. Um, at the time of acceptance, you'll be awarded a uh, academic scholarship, depending on your GPA, um, which if you were a transfer student, you'd be dealing with me. If you're a freshman student, depending on where you're coming, um, you'll be working with one of our other counselors. And we, we've all been trained in finances, of course, and we will provide you with a personalized financial statement that shows you exactly what you can look at to pay uh, out of pocket for the semester and for the year. We also have scholarships. Um, for athletics, fine arts, worship team, we do have a presidential. Um, if you're looking to get maybe um, a hard number before you apply, before you visit, all that kind of stuff, we do have a net price calculator. You're more than welcome to use that. Um, the link's on the screen. You can just literally plug that into your URL code um, and you can go from there and take a look at everything. So dual enrollment, this is an excellent opportunity for students if you're still in high school. So let's say you're in high school, but you really want to get fast tracked on your college classes and all of your credits. That's definitely an opportunity for you. And you can see that we have $100 per credit hour. So that price is phenomenal. Uh, the requirements are 
not as hard as you think it would be. Uh, I have a lot of students that say, I want to dual enroll, but I don't really know if I meet the criteria. If you have at least a 3.0 GPA, uh, and you're at least a, a high school sophomore, excuse me, then you can dual enroll at Bluefield College. Of course, there are some things we'll need to complete your application, like your transcripts, a letter of permission, um, but then you're through the door and I will help you get to the point where you can register for classes and then you can do all of your classes uh, from home. So you don't have to actually be on campus to do those classes. It's completely online. As you can see, it is condensed eight week terms and you can obtain your associate's degree through this dual enrollment program. So that way, when you get to college, you can already have two years out of the way. Um, now I can't promise that you'll have two years out of the way, but that definitely is a possibility. Now, depending if you're a sophomore, if you're a junior or a senior, you'll be able to take a different amount of credit hours, but it's also homeschool friendly. So if you're a homeschool student, you definitely have this opportunity to do this as well. I have actually most of my dual enrollment students, um, I also deal with dual enrollments, of course, um, are actually homeschool students. And this really gives them an opportunity to see maybe what they're interested in and get them uh, through the door to get to their college. So transferring to BC, this also, like dual enrollment, is super easy to do. And it is also a personalized experience. So I'll be contacting you. We'll be working on all of your requirements and everything together. So as long as you have that 2.0 GPA uh, and you have 12 GPA credit hours, uh, we can work with you and we can get you to Bluefield. But let's say you're, uh, you have less than 12 credit hours. You say, I would really love to come to Bluefield College but I've only completed six credit hours at my either community college, my four-year college. That's totally okay. You don't have to have those 12. The only thing I'd need is your final official high school transcript, and then I can still help you get to Bluefield. So don't worry about having those 12. Um, also, if you have, let's say maybe between a 1.5 to a 2.0, um, I can definitely recommend you to uh, our provisional committee where they can take a look at maybe what you're experiencing in your life at the time of your um, studies at the other school and what factors were coming against you at the time and then they can make an, ad, uh, an admissions decision based on that. As you can see, we do meet the VCCS standard, um, which is Virginia Community College. So we have many articulation agreements with a lot of community colleges. So let's say you want to come to Virginia, but you're not ready to study to BC yet. Uh, we have so many agreements with a lot of community colleges. So you can definitely get a little bit familiar with the college feel and then transfer into Bluefield College. So if you're a freshman coming to Bluefield College, um, you would most likely, depending on where you're coming from, be dealing with Scott or one of our other counselors. But the same GPA requirements for freshmen and for transfer students, at least a 2.0. And we are currently test optional uh, with a lot of testing centers being closed due to COVID. But something great is a CLT test. You can do that from your home, a classic learning test. That is able to meet the equivalency standards of ACT or SAT, and you don't have to go to a testing center to do that. You can literally do that from anywhere inside your home, submit that to us, and we'll work with you on that. So the checklist is a little bit different if you were a freshman, but again, it's super easy. So just complete an application, submit uh, your high school transcript, then once an admissions decision has been made with either your work in progress, your unofficial transcript, you'll have to submit your final official high school transcript after you've graduated, of course. And then if you have any of those dual enrollment courses, whether you've taken those with BC, if you've taken those anywhere else, just make sure that we get that credit applied to your profile. Um, and then you already have those in the system and you won't have to worry about maybe uh, taking some general ed that your dual enrollment courses could exempt you out of. International students, this is always super fun. So the GPA is the same for international students. It is a 2.0 across the board for all of our students coming into Bluefield. Uh, you will have to submit either a translated transcript or an evaluated transcript. Now the translation has to be done by official translator. Um, if you wanna get it evaluated, which will not only put it in English, it will also put it in that GPA, GPA 4.0. Don't worry if it isn't in a 4.0 standard, then I can certainly work on you with that. Um, but if you want to have it evaluated, a good service to use is InCred. There are a lot of other services out there, but I always suggest InCred. Um, and then a proof of English proficiency. You can do this Duolingo, TOEFL, a lot of other opportunities. Um, but let's say you 
feel like you have really good English and you don't necessarily want to take one of those tests right off the bat, we can schedule um, a virtual meeting, whether that's on WhatsApp, whether that's over Zoom. I can just talk to you, see how your communication skills are, um, and just determine whether or not your English skills will exempt you from having that English proficiency requirement. And then we can get the ball rolling. Of course, you'll have to submit an application, all of your transcripts, which I just went over. So I promise you I talk a little bit more about one of our veteran students, and that's certainly what I will do now. So this is Sarge. He is a military veteran, um, and he came to Bluefield after his military service. When he got to Bluefield, he really recognized that not only was the area lacking an opportunity for students to work outside of college or in just the various areas of the community, um, but he also noticed that we did not have a good coffee spot in the area, which is something that I really appreciate he did as an avid coffee drinker, um, but also gives me an opportunity to give back to my students and connect with them outside of campus. Um, so Sarge opened a local coffee shop, also serves food as well. It's super good. So if you're in the area, definitely check it out. He opened The Grind, which is completely led by our uh, Bluefield football players. So not only, like I said, do you get to enjoy what they serve, but you also get to support our students because, I mean, not only are they working hard in class, they're working hard on the field, they're also working hard at the grind under Sarge, so they're learning those uh, working skills while they're also applying all of their teamwork um, lessons that they've learned. So not only are they working as football players, but they're working as coworkers, and it's just really cool. But that definitely shows you that Sarge is a good example of our student body, how they are actively looking at things they can improve, whether it's on campus, whether it's in the community, and they really want to hone in on those skills that they're actively learning and show Christ's love in one way or another. So he definitely does show the servanthood, like Scott mentioned earlier. Okay, the promised QR code, here it is. All you have to do is open the camera up on your phone hold that over the QR code and it will send you directly to a form where you can put in some of your contact info. Then we can contact you a little bit more, get to know you, see what program suits you and how Bluefield can help you reach new heights of success. If you'd like to visit our website, you can look over our academic programs a little bit more, uh, view our athletics as well. If you wanna call us, please feel free to do so. Someone will answer you and direct you here. Just tell them you wanna to speak to admissions. And if you want to email us directly, then you can do that as well. So whether you want to talk to me, you want to talk to Scott, you just want to know more about the college in general, just shoot us an email and we'll be able to help you out. But like I said, uh, scan that QR code, take a picture of it so you can do it later. Whatever you want to do, it's up to you. Either way, we definitely want to contact you. We want to see how we can help you. But right now, I'm going to open it up for some questions. All right, Scott, if you would like to do anything, you certainly can. I will hand it back over to you. Sure, thank you, Emily. We do totally appreciate you all being here with us today, this morning, to learn a little bit more about Bluefield College. So I just wanna let you know that we will be here for another several minutes to answer any kind of questions that you may have about the school. So Emily, while we are waiting uh, for some of our attendees to think of some questions that they'd like to ask, I do wanna remind you all at home, uh, that you do have the Q&A functions. You can type in a question if you'd like to ask us anything. But while we're waiting for y'all to think of some of those things you'd like to learn about, I'm just gonna ask Emily to talk a little bit more about the servant leader opportunities that we have in our office in particular. Uh, Emily does work with that student, uh, Mason. So Emily, if you will, just tell us a little bit, what does that relationship look like? Uh, what have you been able to teach him and how is he as a student able to impact our office and therefore impact our college? Yeah, absolutely. So Mason is a student counselor. What that means is he uh, does work in the admissions department. He works under a counselor, which is me. Um, and he really gets to see what goes into the process of helping a student get to Bluefield. It is a pretty involved process. 
um, but he has had the opportunity to learn how we accept a student, the requirements we have for a student, how to build that uh, relationship with a student if they're still kind of on the fence with Bluefield, tell them a little bit about his experience, um, and just overall grow as a person. So before he was serving on a lot of different um, student organizations, but now as an actual employee of the college, he gets to see what goes into just being uh, an employee in general, some of the way you can conduct yourself in the office. Um, he has definitely helped me a lot. He makes a lot of calls for me. He sends out information to our students, whether that is an email, whether that's a text. He's actively having those conversations that I also am having with students. So he, like I always tell everyone, he's literally my right hand. So not only is he getting that work experience in, but he's also getting to see what interests him outside of his general field of study. So he can see how the ways, or excuse me, he can see the ways that his studies can impact uh, real world experience. So just for an example, he and I were talking to a student the other day and he got to connect with that student um, who he hadn't met before, which was cool. Um, and they started, you know, talking a little bit about themselves, things they were interested in. And from there, he was able to share uh, his own experience with the college and that student who is a lower classman really was encouraged by that. So not only is he learning general process in the office, but he's also getting to see how if you step out of your comfort zone a little bit, you're going to be given more opportunities to reach out to people um, and teach them a little bit more about Christ, teach them a little bit more about Bluefield. Very cool. Yeah, I definitely appreciate my personal student counselor. Her name's Taylor. She's a sophomore with us on the soccer team. One of the great things that I'm able to do is really to plan out her schedule with her so that we're aware that yes, you are a student first and foremost, and you're also an athlete, and you want to get that full-time or part-time work experience learning to become uh, professional learning those developmental skills that kind of thing but the thing I think that I like the most about the way that we do uh, professional development and the way that we do student leadership not just in our office but across campus is really a, a three-part system where we're first teaching students a lot of them already come with this knowledge that in order to lead someone else and in order to be a good servant leader first you need to lead yourself uh, you got to be able to look in the mirror decide who you are going to be that day and to um, really follow the teachings that uh, here at Bluefield College we believe are Christ's teachings that really tell us how do we live our individual lives and then through that we're able to really shape that student and the understanding of that this is a place where you're going to need to learn about the others in the community and take on their needs as your own. And then, of course, the understanding that this is not a place where you're going to be able to lead by yourself. This is a place where you're going to be in community with others. So we're not just building you up as an individual. We're not just building up an individual program or an individual office or person's workflow, but really building community here. And the way to do that is to provide those opportunities to as many folks as possible and really allow them to shine by giving them the autonomy to act and operate, but according to those parameters. So just something I would like to highlight while we are still waiting for those questions. Um, I. One, I didn't study at Bluefield, but when I came to Bluefield to work, I can't express um, just how inviting everyone was. No, I mean, I was coming from working at a very stressful place to working at Bluefield. Yes, it could still be stressful, um, but at the same time, I am just extremely supported by my coworkers and I've made great friendships that I think will last for my entire life. So. We know everyone on a first name basis more often than not if I'm eating in the cafeteria or if I'm just sitting on campus somewhere I'm going to be sitting most likely with a student. Um, I mean, not only are they students that I helped get to the college, but they're also my friends. Um, so it's not like a faculty and staff versus students. It's just one big uh, hashtag Rams fam, which is one of our hashtags on campus. So it definitely is like a family, it's very inviting 
and welcoming community. Um, and I'm just glad to be a part of it. So while we are going to continue to wait for more questions, I'll just remind everyone that they do have that opportunity uh, within the Q&A function to type a question. But I'm going to ask a fun question to Emily uh, while you all are thinking. Uh, but a fun question. Um, during this time, it's super important for us to ensure that we're taking care of ourselves. We do have a, a full work schedule. We have families and friends. And, community events that we're no longer able to really engage with the way that maybe we once did. So fun question, uh, what are you doing right now to ensure that you're taking care of yourself? What kind of self-care things are you doing? That is a fun question. Um, so one thing we have been doing on campus, uh, one of our staff in the student development department, Emily Cook, um, she has been leading and Scott, I cannot remember her title. She is Director of Wellness. Uh, counseling. Counseling, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. um, she's been leading uh, faculty, staff, and students on campus through wellness activities. So each week she'll have different opportunities, of course, within social distancing guidelines. But one thing is there have been a lot of planning opportunities. And before COVID, I was not good at taking care of plants. The verdict is still out on whether or not I will now post COVID be good at taking care of plants. But uh, we've planted some cactuses, cacti. Um, so my office uh, has now turned into a small garden. Um, so that I see that taking care of plants or at least attempting to has helped me um, just focus on that life is still growing. Things are still happening. The world's still revolving. Um, even though it feels like COVID has shut everything down life is still ongoing and we will get through this. Um, and it's just, it's nice to take care of something else. It really, at the same time, takes care of you. So that's what I've been doing is trying to take care of two cactuses. Excellent. Yes, if, if we could see it, uh, I believe there's a cactus and another plant, I don't know what it is, uh, but I planted it out on the quad uh, with some of the students. I have two on my windowsill in the office and I hope someone watered them for me yesterday, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. I believe that's a cue for me to do that today. <laughs> oh, at some point, yeah. Yeah, sure. Excellent. So for me, I'm just trying to stay active. Uh, we do have uh, the city park is directly behind our campus. There is a walking trail so that you can go straight from campus to the park without having to get out onto a road if you don't want to. There are over 10 miles of trails that are used for walking and jogging, as well as you'll find some mountain bikers out there. So I'm just trying to stay active. I try to take a walk every day, get my heart rate up a little bit, and I'm exploring new coffees. So we do have a wide variety uh, here at the local grocery stores, but I'm excited to be able to get out sometime soon, go over to Sarge's The Grind Coffee Shop. He is importing uh, from a variety of locations, one of which is Vigilant Hope, which is a nonprofit organization in North Carolina. It's led by Jeremy and his wife, Megan Hardy. They're both graduates of Bluefield College, and I've never had one of their coffees. Uh, they use that as a fundraising mechanism so that they're able to stay funded and nonprofit and able to share Christ's love with their community. So I'm excited to go out and try some of their coffee as well. And in my Bluefield College mug, oh, oh yeah, the digital background. Um, <laughs> I know it's not winter time yet, um, but I'm, I'm ready for the seasons to change, I think, and uh, looking forward to some of that winter weather. So Emily, as a local, um, can you tell us a little bit about how the seasons are going to change and what kind of sights and sounds we can expect this fall and winter? 
<laughs> Absolutely. Um, so the we are called Four Seasons Country for a reason. So last week um, we were in flip flops. We were in shorts. This week I am in a sweater and a coat over that. This morning it was in the thirties. Um, so those seasons they change a lot. But what we're looking at upcoming into late September, early October, uh, the leaves are going to start changing. Foliage is going to start looking a little bit warmer, well, warmer color, I guess. Um, and it's going to get really beautiful. So one of the things we are known for in the area is our fall foliage views. Uh, we have people come from Maryland. We have people come from New Jersey, the Carolinas, um, Ohio even, that come to just look at our mountain views of all of our fall foliage. I think that's a big draw for the area. Um, and then once leaves do start to fall, it'll start to get a little bit chillier and it will average out. We're kind of in a cold snap right now. Um, but the average temperature for this time of year, I would say is mid to lower 60s probably. Then we'll get into November, December. It'll get a little bit colder, but it won't, depending on the year, start snowing until January or February. We have seen snow on Halloween. We've seen snow April Fool's Day. Uh, it really just depends on that year. Um, I'm not sure if you all are familiar, but there is an old wives tale that you can tell what the winter will be like dependent on the caterpillars. And if it makes anyone feel any better, I saw a caterpillar recently and according to the caterpillar it would not be a bad winter. So um, I believe it was either last year or the year before, I think it was last year, we got at least a foot of snow in an hour. Um, so that was, that was a harsh winter, but then there's also been winters when it's been 75 in February. So it really just depends on the year and whatever God wants us to experience, but whether it's freezing outside, whether it's warm, um, I mean, I still think it's pretty, but I'm a little bit biased. So <laughs> that's your meteorology facts for the day. So Scott, I know you're not from the area. You're originally from Roanoke. What are some ways you found to plug into the community and felt more comfortable in the area, even though you're not originally from here? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the great things about Bluefield as a smaller town and a smaller community is that it's really easy to build connections quickly because a lot of folks know each other. So that allows me to go into a new setting, like when I was visiting churches and say, hey, my name is Scott. I work over at Bluefield College. Like, oh, mom, uncle, next door neighbor, Bible study teacher. A lot of folks are involved in our community already. So it's really easy for me to go out and introduce myself and then very quickly and easily build that foundation for relationship because we're so well invested in the community as a campus. Other great things, um, I participate in a weekly uh, board game night, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> Able to interact and meet and greet and just have a nice dinner together and then play some games. Uh, but this is really truly an outdoor community. We are surrounded by all of God's beauty in nature. And he's allowed us to have rivers and lakes and streams for fishing and boating and swimming, as well as miles and miles of trail systems. The Appalachian Trail is very close by. So as an avid hiker, I do very much enjoy being out in the Virginia wilderness. I recently uh, calculated all of my trips up to 20 uh, 16 and I had logged 1500 miles, give or take by that point. Um, and I'm excited to continue to add more to that number. Um, but I will go ahead and, and stop because I know that we are getting close to our cutoff time. So again, I just want to thank everyone for being here and participating with us today, learning more about Bluefield College. Emily, if it is possible, go ahead and switch back to that bottom slide where we do have that QR code, just in case anyone wants to pull that up and give us a little time. Go
go ahead and scan that and All right, so I'm going to take back over screen sharing real quick. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Welcome back, Scott. Uh, what's up? All right. Okay, so thank you for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted, so be sure to sign up for any additional session at CACRA.org, that's C-A-C-R-A-O.org. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at CACRA.org, that's C-A-C-R-A-O.org. Thank you guys so much.